Hey, this is Woodsmith. We've got this second half of the Hellhammer build put together here. I went over the tire drive and various other parts in the first video. And um, for anybody following that, we still got all those same parts except for now everything's painted up and, and looking nice. The next major part that I built is the motor mount and the brake. You can see I've got a split pivot point there so the motor can actually pivot up without pushing the brake down and then when the motor sets down it engages the brake. Uh, loud enough clearance for everything to move when it's in this, this uh, rather snug spacer at the very bottom of the frame of my machine. And you can see we're intentionally trying to keep the center of gravity low, keep everything stable and enclosed within that main frame. You can also see there the tail end of the linkage, which is the next step of the build. Wanted a linkage with absolutely no slop, or just the best degree of sensitivity and finesse at the foot pedal. So we have there a uh, actually a tie rod. So we have a tie rod end, an inner tie rod end on one end, and an outer tie rod end on the other end. Um, this gives me adjustment as well as two ball joints, not not allowing any slop or play in that linkage which is running totally in a straight line. The next piece here is a foot pedal. At the top lever where the linkage attaches I actually made three mounting holes that allows us to adjust just how much leverage you have when you depress the pedal, you know how much leverage you have over lifting the motor. And uh, that adjustment along with the adjustment of the rod itself allowed me to put the pedal as close to the floor as I wanted it so it's more ergonomical to run. The other thing is the kind of two-stage part of the pedal where um, the regular set of hinges and a, a secondary pedal made out of gauge material underneath which is a set of springs and a momentary switch. So once you flip the main power on, the motor can remain off until you step on that pedal just enough for the electric motor to come on and then hard enough to actually engage it and start hammering. I think this could be used as a as a real good safety device on a number of different machines or a number of different even existing hammers. Now on the anvil post I welded the top plate on which already had a two inch hole in the middle being it come from a PTO clutch and that allows us to stuff the thing full of all these steel clippings I've saved up and uh, fill her up with sand at the same time and then the die block will be bolted on on top of that. Now on the hell barn, being it was essentially an open C channel, we have uh, just about 4x4 four four worth of solid white ash there that's clamped in place to control twist and it puts the wood in compression essentially in the steel in tension. And at the bottom rear of the arm, the leaf spring passes through a gap between the channel and the axle pin and leaves me enough room to shim and then clamp that in place so we can give ourselves enough a clearance above the leaf spring to allow for varying degrees of flex and get this thing to work. Now the lower die bolts in place on the mounts I welded to our anvil block. And the way I did that you have a flat die face here and if you loosen it up you can rotate it back 90 degrees and you have a fullering face there so we have both flat and fullering dies just made in one block. The top die of course clamps in place with a pair of U-bolts and a layer of steel to protect the wood and uh, I got that all trued up and lined up so they meet parallel and straight. So what we got now is a working power hammer made pretty much entirely from scrap. I have tried this out and did a little bit of trial testing and it hits seriously hard. It might hammer like a 50 pound little giant. Um, it might take a little bit of tuning here, to, to, so that I'll be completely happy with the lighter blows and the controllability on single hits and such, but uh, as a hell of hammer, I really expect it to be a drawing machine anyway. So, thanks to everybody that viewed and commented on the last video. I'm actually surprised how much interest there's been in this, and if you guys see anything you can use there, go for it. Hopefully by the end of the week we'll have a little bit of tweaking done and we can put together a video of this hammer and out some heavy steel. Um, seemed like going over this build in detail was the best way to share, share the particulars of this type of construction and I was hoping that it would be more useful to the viewers out there. Thanks again.